What is up guys, Vijaya Timothy here and welcome back to Everlasting Summer. So on the last episode, we found out that this whole cam is an infinite loop and that's crazy interesting. So let's just get why on it real quick. Just in case, I had no intention of watching over all the pioneers running around and packing. So I just lay on my bed and they didn't even notice how I dazed off. It was somebody's voice that woke me up. Boy, what are you doing here? A familiar pioneer was sitting directly opposite, with his back to me. I gotten used to him a bit since yesterday and it even seemed that I stopped fearing him. Hey, why do you always hide your face? Because you shouldn't say it. If you say so, why is it like that ugly or something? I wasn't in a position to argue. So what are you going to reveal this time? You already know that it's the last day of a session, don't you? Yeah? And you've already spoken with that one? Yes. So what did he tell you? Nothing special, he said that there's an exit out of here. The pioneer burst into laughter. Yeah, I believed that two ages ago. And now? And what is now? I have my past, my life back then. I stopped talking for some time. Anyway, it was all... It all was a long while ago, so I don't really remember. The future is all the same. Loops, 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 repetitions of the same story. Where is this now? Well, I had to say it, but I'm not yet as lost in time as you are. Oh, there's nothing. That will come with time. He broke into diabolic laughter. There's just one thing I don't understand. What's your reason for coming to me? What do you expect to achieve? Me? Nothing really. So why did you come then? It's just because you, him and others like us are the only real people around here. Given everything he'd said to me already, I just wasn't ready to believe that all the local tenants are just puppets in some kind of hellish stage play. Well, I have a feeling that that's really the case though. Are you sure that you were? Why about what? Well, that you were about everything. I can't be right or wrong. I didn't choose this world, I didn't throw myself into it. I'm just here and you're just here. Listen, I've already got a headache from your philosophizing. I was kind of puzzled myself as to why I was so calm talking to this mysterious pioneer. Well, here it is, right in front of me. All the fantasy and devilry that's happened in this camp. Here it is, an explanation, at least a partial one, for how I got here. Here they are, the answers I've searched for such a long time. No, it's only been a week, right? On the other hand, my behavior was quite logical. While I couldn't quite explain what was happening, the Kako guy just talked and talked. Let's not let his words change anything. Then what's the point of listening to him? Oh no, you will soon understand everything yourself. Somebody was knocking at the door. I got up to open it. Yo, it's the hot girl. It was Luffy on the doorstep. You came to see Olga Dimitrievna? No. Come in then. I was 100% sure that the pioneer had already disappeared. Turns out I was right. Slappy took a seat on the bed and I snuggled against the wardrobe in the far corner of the room. She was distinctly nervous. Did something happen? Not really, it's just today's the last day. Well, I'm already aware better late than never. Well, so I thought. I mean, we probably won't see, ch see each other ever again. Oh, you, you just, you are just clueless, huh? It's a small world, as they say. But maybe you would give me your address to write letters. I would have if I only knew it myself. You know, let's do it the other way around. You give me your address, I'll definitely write to you upon arrival. But why don't you want to give out yours? Well, we were just about to move, so you never know. It's better if I write to you. I try to put on my cutest smile to make my story look more credible. Okay, it's fine then. Slaffy so got up and seemed to be leaving. Hey, wait, what about the address? Let's do it later. But why? An expression of sorrow and disappointment crossed her face. I just shut the door and right then heard the spiteful voice of the pioneer from behind. Maybe that's because she doesn't have an address because she's an NPC, huh? Well, happy now, you've heard a girl. 
What have I heard with her with? What should I have said to her? My dear, why to my dear granny in the village? Or should have left her to the rest of a house that's probably not even built yet. So what? I am not my brother's keeper. It's your world, not mine. I'll manage somehow in my own. The last praise really made me squirm. You know what? I didn't manage to finish the praise. Someone was knocking at the door again. Come in. Bonyana flew into the cabin. Why the rush, my lady? I made an excessively slowy bow. Me, I'm just... Her eyes darted about cautiously and her cheeks were blush. Just wanted to say goodbye. There will be time for that anyway. After all, we'll all be going on the same bus. Yeah, you're right, but it's kind of embarrassing in front of everybody. Oh, so there is something that you can be embarrassed by. Surprising, I laughed. Err, she pouted. I just wanted to tell her that you aren't a douche, really. In fact, you're almost a cool guy. Her words astonished me. Well, thanks? You're good to hang out with too. Well, that's that. She was outside, slamming the door loudly. Hey, didn't expect that from her, did you? I got nothing to do with that, I told you. It really looks like you knew what she will say. Maybe I did, maybe not. You just came here to mock me. I started to lose my temper. That idea had also crossed my mind. Then why the hell are you hanging around here? If I ever need a man to comment on all my actions, I'll hire a professional psychologist. You think that after all this time, I don't qualify as one? My estimation is that after all the time here, you've definitely gone bananas. All psychologists are freaks. Yes, but not all freaks are psychologists. Well, when you put it that way, he laughed out loud. A sense of humor, how encouraging. Frankly, your jokes are fairly lame. Who are you laughing at? At yourself. Listen, if you've got nothing to do in your old world, go and buck that second one. And have you got anything to do in your world? The pioneer shop they counter. You know, I'll find out what to do. I'll pack up my things, leave this camp, and then what? Then what? Like I know, I've never been in such a situation before, believe it or not. It's just that you've forgotten that you won't be able to leave the camp. Yeah, he was right on this matter. Unless he's lying though, probably. Just because you failed to do so, that doesn't mean that I will fail too. You're the boss. There was a knocking at the door. So quiet that I barely heard it. Damn, who else is it? He sighed under my breath and shouted. Come in. But the door didn't open. So I pulled the handle myself. Oh, what? What's with that face though? Lena was on the doorstep. It looks like I really scared her. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. You came to see Olga Dmitrievna. No. She stayed, she stayed staring at the ground. So what is it then? What did Lena want from me? Come in. She came in and hesitated in the middle of the room. Want to take a seat? I pointed at one of the beds. Lena hesitated a bit more, but nevertheless took a seat. Did something happen? Not at all, it's just... She threw a quick glance at me, blushed at once and looked away. Here. And I took something out of her pocket and handed it to me. I was stunned. It was my phone. But where did you get it from? I found it in the forest. Oh, okay. Okay, but why do you think it's mine? Some boy told me so. Huh? Hmm, is it the other version of me? Have you ever seen him before? I don't know, I couldn't see his face, but he was dressed in a pioneer uniform. Aha. Uh -huh. Everything was clear at once. And don't you wonder what it is? I look at the screen. There still was some battery left. Therefore, the cell phone shouldn't just, just look like a piece of plastic to Lena. I don't know. Some kind of game. Yeah, you're right. I quickly opened Snake in the menu and handed the phone to her. Here you go, a keepsake. Oh, what are you doing? I can't. Lena waved her hands at me. Take it, I have loads of this at home. She resisted a bit more, but finally she took the device. And what do I do with it? Press the keys to move left and right. You've got to eat this palace and keep from hitting your own tail. Wow, it's so interesting. She smiled. 
Thank you, and yet I have nothing for you. It's so embarrassing. I don't need anything, thanks. No, that's not good. She said with a voice that sounded more confident than, than usual. Fine, then just give me a kiss or something. It's the last day today after all. Yeah, or is it? I hope we'll meet again. I think we will. And I have a present for you. And what is it? Close your eyes. Oh, really? Wait, wait, wait. Are you... I did so. And promise that you won't open them until I tell you. Okay. No, you have to promise. Alright, I promise. In the moment I felt like kiss on my cheek. Oh. Nice. I was really eager to open my eyes, but I promise. Open. The room was empty. What a girl. The only thing I managed to say. So how does it feel, Sturt? I heard malicious laughter from the place where Lena had just been sitting. So that's your new way of pranking me, eh? Using the others. Me? Pranking? God forbid. Indeed, you got a kiss from a sweet girl thanks to me on the cheek, but anyway. I really wanted to beat him up at the moment, but I wasn't even sure that he's a physical being here. I presume that this prank wasn't your last one. I said calmer. Who knows? Is it fun? The pioneer laughed hard. Perhaps Professor Moore to laugh like that, anticipating the success of his diabolical plan. You're certainly having fun, but I'm not. Relax, dude. There's almost nothing left, and here you go, your second lap. So you do a dozen, then you'll earn a pit stop. Although, you probably won't need me then. you figure out everything yourself. It's not like I need you right now either. Oh, what ingratitude. Just cut it out, if you ever. You shut up already. No understanding. Shut your damn mouth, boy. This is intense. I scream so loud that the walls tremble. Oh no, he, she heard me. The front door suddenly burst open and Alyssa came in. Is it just me or has someone gone completely nutty nuts? She asked with fraud. Well, you could say so. I answered angrily. Why are you yelling? Because I want to. I've already realized that the accidental arrival of Alyssa was either planned by this pioneer or will be commented on him by him in a manner that I sooner drive a pair of nails into my ears than have to hear. Have you gone psycho or something? Alyssa reclined on the bed in a laid back manner. To what do I owe the honor? I came just for the sake of it, and you just hear screaming. You aren't doing anything just for the sake of it. I've got nothing to do, I've packed my stuff, it's boring. Well, well. You could think that I came to you because... She threw an angry glance at me and turned away. I really shouldn't have come after that. After what? I haven't said a word. Of course, you thought it instead. Oh, so you can read minds now. There's no need to read your mind, it's written all over your face. It was hardly possible that to read anything on my face besides fatigue and anger. And what have you read there? That's none of your business. What is she talking about? Well, it's not like I'm holding you here. Forget it, I'll go whatever I please, wherever I please, don't boss me around. Okay, stay here then, for God's sake. Anyway, I like Alyssa's company was much more than the pioneers. I lay back and closed my eyes. It took Alyssa a few minutes to break the silence. You really don't want to tell me anything. For example? Today's the last day after all. So you're happy? Well? She babbled uncertainly. Everyone's leaving. Good riddance. And that's all. You know something else? Didn't you like it here? Her voice sounded unusual. I've seen better places. Damn, you're so dumb that speaking to you is a complete waste of time. She got up and headed to the exit. Yep, good luck to you too. Alyssa turned to me. Her face was waiting with anger. Couldn't you at least have said that you'll miss me? Sure I will. Wim. She slammed the door loudly. Stupid. I I didn't hear my last line, of course. What a wayward chick, huh? As good as you are. And you in that case. Of course, keep comparing me to yourself. I remarked mischievously. But what's the difference? We're in the same situation. I've just been here a little longer. Well, in fact, a lot longer. And you've already gone completely nuts. No wonder. His hoarse laughter was really pissing me off. 
Listen, have I already told you that you should be an actor? You do a brilliant Hannibal Lecter. Especially since you consider yourself a psychiatrist. I'll think about it. <laughs> well, now I must go. Maybe I'll see you again. Get lost. I turned to look at him, but the pony had already disappeared. Oh, finally. But nevertheless, why did he come? It might be the case that me, him, and others like us are the only real people around here, but I desperately didn't want to believe that. All his speech seemed like some sort of complex game. Like he's trying to give me a one hand after the other, trying to lead me to something, enabling me to discover some kind of devious plot. Too bad he's not really successful at that because I'm out of ideas. Time drag on deceitfully slowly, but it's 5 p.m. already. It's common during the summer. If one counts the seconds and minutes, it appears that even a single hour would never end. But if one thinks of anything else, then the whole day flies back quickly. I decided to stop packing. They could live without me. Quickly took all my winter stuff and shoved it in the bag. I was almost about to jump onto the bag again, but the door opened and Olga the Matripna came in. Oh, I see you packed already. That's great, let's go. I got up reluctantly, grabbed my simple luggage and followed her. I really don't care what will happen next. I had long suspected that nothing was up to me in this world and recent events had reinforced my complete confidence in this. I might wake up tomorrow in bus number 4110 or I might not wake up at all. And that's all folks, it's all that simple. There's no point in staying here, there's nowhere to run. Basically, my only exit is to leave on the bus with everyone else. Going to the unknown. That's all I've been doing for the last week, stumbling along a narrow path in pitch black darkness, unsure of where is the beginning and where is the end. We were almost approaching the gates when I heard someone calling my name. Samyon, Samyon. All good trip now, excuse me, just a minute. Wait, was it, was that her? Hmm, okay, but make it fast or we'll live without you. I headed for the bush bushes that the voice came from. Oh, it's, okay, it's not her, Samyon. I waited through the thick winning weed and came out onto a forest path. The voice seemed to be calling from nowhere. One moment it was heard behind a tree, and now it seems to be behind my back. Probably it's one of those aliens from the parallel worlds, but I suspect that I haven't met this exact one before. We don't have much time. I'm listening. I know that you've already been contacted by him and him. Yeah. And I know that they've told you. Don't ask me how. Okay. But you must know one thing, the thing I know. There's more than a dozen of us here. In fact, more than a thousand. But a lot of people got out. Wait, what? I tried to digest what he said and phrase the white questions. Then why are you here? I stayed. Why? To help others to find an exit. Oh, okay. So the reason he only meet 10 others like him those are the failed ones, and then there are actually like a lot that exit. Wow, how generous. And why should I trust you? You're the third one already. When in fact, I'm not even sure that you all are in just my hallucination. It's not about trust. Then what is it about? It's about the right choice. Consider this camp to be a giant maze. You should take a few right turns to find an exit. Okay, and how do I know which ones are right? You will know. Come with me. Where to? To the second lab. Hold on a sec. The pioneer said that my second lab will start tomorrow. He lied. The speaker raised his voice. He's gone completely crazy and he's trying to destroy all the others. So if I don't go with you and live on the bus, then I'll be destroyed. What? I don't know. And why do you say so? Nobody ever returned after a conversation with him. Listen, why should I trust you? I was definitely on the edge. What well, apparently just mocked me and didn't seem to be a real danger. This one clearly spoke about things worth being anxious about. I couldn't decide which one I should should I trust. This problem is like trying to get a blind man to say whether the light in the room is on or off. He can only guess. Just like me. Hurry up, time is running out. Hey, wait a sec. Make a choice, are you coming or not? I think we should follow the voice, man. Okay, let's go. Don't tell me it's a trap, though. Anyway, he should. He's not more credible than a crazy pioneer. Of course, the solution could be fatal, but the alternative isn't any better. 
Just took a shot in the door. Okay, so where are we going? We are already there. My eyesight started to fade and I felt my consciousness leaving me. Epic fail? What? Bad end? No, that's a trap? Oh my... No! So that was a trap, huh? Fine. Oh, man. That was annoying. Okay, you might have tricked me before, but now I won't follow the voice. Now, you know what? I, I can't just believe you in only a couple of minutes. At least I've known the other guy for a little longer and his arguments seem to be more weighty. You'll be sorry. Those words sounded like they were coming from another world. The voices seem to disappear. Of course, I couldn't be sure whether my choice is right or wrong. It was a blind guess enforced by a time limit. Nevertheless, whether I'm right or not, we'll find out soon. In a couple of minutes, I was standing at the bus stop with all the other pioneers. Everybody's here. Began Olga Dimitrivna. You're leaving our camp today and I'd like to tell you something important. She was visibly nervous and desperately lost for words. I hope that you remember the time you spent here for a lifetime and that you'll retain only pleasant memories about Sofiana. I also hope that you became at least a little bit better, managed to learn something and found new friends. Just come back next, next year. The camp leader looked away. It's like she was trying to keep the tears inside. I didn't expect her to get so emotional. Although her speech sounded like complete nonsense to me as usual. The pioneer started to crowd into the bus, babbling cheerfully. I decided to not to hold on a little and say proper goodbye to this camp. All of a sudden, I felt a deep urge to throw a coin. Of course, there's no fountain here, and honestly, I don't feel like returning. It's still just a superstition and I don't believe in them. At last, at least I never believed in them before. Digging through my pockets, I found only a couple of candy wrappers, a pencil, and a scrap of paper. I held them for a moment, then I squatted. But I put the paper on the ground and scribbled a few words. You are here for a reason. Grinning at my stupidity, I threw the scrap under the wheels of the bus and got into the cabin. I found a place in the middle. The strangest thing that was, was that everyone sat in pairs and only I was alone. However, what's the difference now? I'll either disappear or restart everything in a couple of hours. The bus was slowly moving towards the district center, occasionally bouncing over the bumps in the road. It was impossible to see anything beyond the old windows in the pitch black dark of the night. And this girl... Her eyes is creepy, man. Anyway, I couldn't care less about the surrounding countryside. I just sat and waited for the inevitable. For the first time in a long while, my head was completely empty. The partners around me enjoyed the trip. Oyana and Alisa were playing cards. Lena was reading a book and Slavia was sleeping. Miku was trying in vain to start a conversation with Zenya, And Zenya was trying really hard not to start killing people. Electronic and Shurik were crafting something as always. I was the only one completely ignored by everyone. It might be a slightly far-fetched perception. I got used to the role of being the center of the universe in the camp. I thought that everything revolved around me. Well, that might be so up to a certain degree, but here and now I'm only a foreign object. An out-of-place molecule in the harmonic pattern of a crystal grid. I'm not sure how long we spent on the road, but sleep had already started to overcome me. By the way, what is this? Is this a headband or something? Is she an alien? I was desperately fighting Morpheus, trying to stay awake as long as I could. I feel it's quite possible that today is the last day of my life. Then yeah, probably it's reasonable to cling as hard as I could to these few hours of meaningless, useless existence. However, physical fatigue and more importantly, emotional fatigue took its toll and I fell asleep.
Oh, the dots. Hmm. What does that mean? A sharp pain dropped to my entire body. I felt it especially sharply in my temples. It feels like they're ready to shatter into a thousand little pieces, giving the wind free access to my empty head. Probably I would not have been able to stand even five minutes of such torture if I hadn't opened my eyes in time. I was somewhere, it was impossible to tell precisely where. My mind was clouded and mist, my thoughts were confused. The moment between the unconscious and conscious states when you vividly remember your dreams. Wait, what? I was going somewhere by bus and was about to doze off when suddenly the girl came up to me and began to speak quickly. Who's that? I couldn't understand a word but the girl looked very upset. I failed to understand what she needed from me. Time passed and she kept talking on and on. It was getting really annoying. I wanted to ask her to cut it out or at least calm down a bit, but I failed. Either because I didn't manage to say anything or because my words didn't reach her. I couldn't even see her face. I was simply listening and staring, staring and listening. Is this the girl that appears in my dream or something? Perhaps it wasn't important for me then. Surely you would not try to remember that what a mosquito disturbing your sleep looks like. Surely you would have managed to recall the frequency of its flapping wings or the inclination of its proboscis after that. And this girl is just one of millions of voices that disturb you from concentrating, from thinking, from falling asleep. The louder her voice grew, the harder it got for me to catch her words. The bus cabin, the seats worn by time, the uneven floor, the rusty ceiling, the cracked glass of the windscreen. Everything was floating away along with her. And then I felt the unique sense of relief. It didn't matter how real the bus and the girl had been, it was nothing but a bug to me. And here I am, hanging in total emptiness and falling inside a dream. Oh, I'm back here? Wow, dreams can be really something. Not quite a nightmare, yet definitely not something pleasant. I got up, rubbed my face to get back to reality. Give a lot yawn and prepare to clean myself up. Yo, that's one messy room though. It was a really grey morning. Unable to find my hygiene kit on the nightstand, I concluded that I could manage without it. It was hard to get dressed. My hands were trembling like hell. I look at my reflection in the mirror and check out my two weeks double. Well, perhaps Organa Trifna has a razor. It was only when I went outside that I suddenly understood that I'm not in a pioneer camp. I'm back in my apartment. So it was a 7 days dream? Or 7 days felt like... No, no, no. One night felt like 7 days. Hmm. I just come out of my room into a passageway, not out of the cabin. I was overwhelmed with surprise, with dismay, with fear, even with terror. But how? I sat down on the bed and buried my face into my hands, trying to remember the chain of yesterday's events. Yeah, the bus, the last day of the term. Yeah, I fell asleep and woke up back home. But to some degree, it might even seem quite logical. It seemed that the initial astonishment was worn off during the first few seconds. After all, the fact that I came back like this after a week-long absence is no stranger than my sudden appearance. As some pioneer cam, the 80s in the first place. The events of the last two days flashed before my eyes in an instant. That mysterious pioneer his words. But how did I manage to get back to reality then? Because he was part of your dream, right? So none of that is real. According to him, I was going to be stuck there forever as there's no exit. On the other hand, I wasn't alone. The pioneer at the bus stop and the mystery voice emphasized the contrary that the exit exists. As I mean I found it, I managed to get out of the endless loop. But how? Nevertheless, I wasn't sure whether I should rejoice or grieve. Over the last week, I'd kind of gotten used to the everlasting inner monologue, the search for answers and in the in-depth analysis of everything. So I simply couldn't accept this fact as it was, without figuring out what exactly happened to me. Sure, he told me that I'm the only one who has observed the existence of other guys like me doing their very first loop. But does that mean anything? Anyway, all his theories and ideas constantly collapse like a house of cards. Now I had to decide how I should re react. Of course, I should rejoice. After all, I'm back to the real world. 
Maybe the last seven days were just a dream. Indeed, there's absolutely no evidence that I really was there. I don't see my pioneer uniform anywhere. I look my age, just like I did before. My phone is on the table, fully charged. But one can deceive one's own memory. One can live through such terrifically real experiences in dream. I still remember the events of the whole week in great detail. Perhaps I was in a coma all this time. An ironic laugh escaped my lips. Nah, that's not an option either. Then all's well that ends well. The last few hours in this camp flashed through my mind. Indeed, I wasn't hoping to get out either from the camp or from that reality. And I was pretty much ready to another week. And another. And another one. I, I settled up my role. I reconciled with my destiny. And what was I supposed to do after all the stuff that happened? I heaved a doomed sigh, got up from my bed with considerable effort, and went to my computer. That's weird, but according to it, only 40 hours have passed since my disappearance from this world. Not a whole week. A new message in that, in the instant messenger. Hi Samyeon, yesterday it was legendary. See you, L and R. My college friend, it was him who invited me to that party with the rest of his college friends. That I was going to the tent. Suddenly all my senses came back to me. The headache, the dizziness, all the symptoms of a hangover. It looks like I indeed attended that party yesterday. And I was partying hard. But there was no party in the camp. But then, where did all these memories, emotions and feelings come from? All of this was so incomprehensible that I became enraged. I began cursing foully trying to tear my hair out and hammering on the keyboard with my fist. I didn't return to a normal state until where no keys left on it. Why should I care so much? Nobody worries when a dream or, or a hallucination ends. Moreover, people are unusually usually glad that it happens. Was I really that prepared to stay there that my return to reality became so undesirable for me? And then a simple and obvious thought crossed my mind, perhaps I'm just going insane. Indeed, madmen frequently have visions which they perceive as reality. Besides, I had all the symptoms of insanity. I never lived the four walls of my prison. I never socialized. I have lots of psychological problems. Well, that explains a lot. My dark, nervous laughter echoed in the room. I guess it's the right time for me to visit a therapist, or rather a psychiatrist. Or should I just surrender myself at the asylum? A horse. A horse. Half my kingdom for a horse. I cried at the top of my lungs between bouts of my manic laughter. Dispute not with her, she is a lunatic. The record my neighbors made on the wall calmed me down somehow. If I'm tripping that bad, it looks like only a lobo Tommy could help me. I just sat completely freaked out for several hours, doing nothing, thinking nothing, just staring at the monitor, long since gone into sleep mode. Finally, I moved the mouse and opened a few tabs in the browser. So it was new. F5, F5. I said the events of the past week had never happened. Come on, do you have to grieve for a hallucination? Was it real? Sure. Lots of memories? Sure. Looks true enough, by all means, yes. Any proof? No. The verdict is clear, as is my future course. I have long suspected that my current lifestyle wasn't doing me any good. I wasn't ready for such an unusual event, but so what? I have to be more prepared for my next trip. Night, an endless stream of twists and images took my mind off my lamentations and considerations. An instant message window popped up most unexpectedly. Hi, how are you doing? Share quite an original way to start a conversation. Doing fine? The context profile was completely empty, not even a nickname. It's a 9 digit number. You can guess what kind of person is on the other end by just looking at the number, can you? Sure, someday it will be all different. Unified digital identifiers instead of names. A couple of symbols for a biography. Several bites of personality and three and a half pairs of feelings. Get home safely. Probably someone from yesterday's party. Seems like it. You do remember everything I told you yesterday, right? Well, I guess not. There was yet another message after a long pause. I see. Honestly, I don't give a damn who this is and why he is messaging me. Until this unidentified individual starts harassing me. 
I could easily tolerate his presence in my contact list. Well, that's okay, we'll meet again. We surely will. Sure, looking forward to it, yeah. Alright. Bye. I didn't reply. This odd screwed up day at last was slowly coming to end. Going to bed, I yet again recalled in my head all the events that seemed so real for me. Where am I going to wake up tomorrow? Will these hallucinations return? Nah, I'll probably just forget everything. Strange, but now I'm really feeling that everything happened now is real. It was just a fiction, a game of deformed imagination, or really something fantastical. And here's reality. Sometimes inconvenient, sometimes it unfolds differently from how you wish. Surprises you like this, but it's still reality. I fell asleep with these thoughts. Bit by bit, my life resumed its normal course and started to forget the events of that week. After all, nothing bad happened, even if it was indeed real, who cares? There were only seven days in the pioneer camp. I wasn't killed, nobody kidnapped me to conduct experiments. I wasn't brainwashed, so why do I care now about the reason? And if it indeed was a hallucination, I could only hope that it won't repeat itself. I was still shut in. My computer and the internet were my only friends and the keyboard was the only communication channel connecting me to the outside world. The F5 key became the main thing in my life again. Come to think of it, it really wasn't all that bad. Then one day a familiar combination of digits popped up on the screen that strange contact mine had some. Come online once again. Hey. Hey. How are you doing? Doing fine. Probably I knew him from somewhere, but who cares anyway? Any news? Not really. Stability is a sign of true class. One might say so. Oh, I see. This conversation was over for me, but he didn't seem to feel like that. How do you know it's a he? It might be a she though. So nothing has changed? Nope, should it have. Well, it's not like you experience stuff like that on a day-to-day -day basis. Not everybody gets to experience it either. What are you talking about? Don't you get it? I was starting too. I prefer you to explain. Don't you remember the camp? Oh boy. It felt like an electric shock. All the events of that week immediately sprang up in my mind. My hands started to tremble. A cold sweat burst from my forehead. I turned around in horror, already imagining that I see aliens, ghosts, or the Grim Reaper. But there was nobody in my room except me, as always. I went to the corridor, checked the kitchen and in the bathroom, still nobody. At last, I returned to the computer. The same message window was still flashing steadily, as if it was a perfectly ordinary message. Who are you? My hands were trembling so much I could hardly hit the white keys. Oh, so you do remember it. My hallucination seems to be continuing. Or did I never leave the camp in the first place? Or it's just a dream after all? Or... I don't know what to say. I admit it sincerely. Anyway, I felt that this in entity, that's the only definition that I could think of, doesn't need any kind of internet to communicate with me. Well, you can just keep silent, everything's perfectly clear. The smiley at the end of the line looked like the devil himself, stretching his deformed jaws open to devour me. What is happening to me? I finally made up my mind to ask that question. Nothing. Nothing at all, you're just living your regular life. But the camp, was it real? And what do you think? I'm not sure. If it seemed real to you, then yes, it was real. If not, then it wasn't. It's just that simple. That's not simple at all. What will happen to me next? I whispered. Nothing to worry about. It seems that it really hurt me without the use of the internet. Terror changed my whole body. I closed my eyes and curled myself into a ball. Why are you doing this to me? I started to lose it. Words were coming out of my mouth by themselves, illogical, meaningless sets of words. Why me? What for? What for? Leave me alone, I haven't done anything bad. Several minutes after I found the courage to open one eye and take a look at the monitor. You are the reason for everything. Wait, what? The message window was flickering coldly. And what's next? Oh, you'll see that soon enough. Everything started fading to black in my eyes, noise filled my ears and started to feel dizzy. I felt that my very soul was escaping its physical shell. The events of the last few days became hazy. 
as if they all happened to someone other than me. Then the memories of the camp started to vanish, as if somebody was using an eraser to truthfully rub up words written with a pencil. A moment later, I felt and sensed nothing, as though I was plung into a state of cosmic bliss. If anyone saw me at the moment, they would notice that I was smiling. Oh no, he's gone quay quay. Eh? I'm kind of stuck here. I hit the report spam button, close the window, switch to the browser and glance at the clock. Time to get going or I'm gonna be late. Forever alone, boy! Every story has its beginning and its end. Every story has its own outline, synopsis, contents, key points, a prologue, and an epilogue. And there's no book which, if you read it again, will not reveal new details you didn't notice before. Every story has its beginning and its end. Almost every. Um, what? Oh, okay. Oh, it's the end, huh? Well... There are still stuff I don't understand about this story though, like... Who was that message from? Was that from one of the girls, or was that from... The crazy version of Samyon that has been there hundreds of times. It's weird. But I think if I want to get the true ending, I need to romance one of the girls. Well, anyway, it's been a fun ride, this story. This game is unique. I understand why it's one of the top like visual novels in Steam. It's really complicated. I think it really drives people to to play over and over again, just to see a different route. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me in this playthrough. I'll see you guys in the next game. Bye.